Okay, well, thank you so much uh, for meeting with me on the cold day. Really appreciate it, but really just want to talk to you, you know, the final push um, before the caucuses and just kind of getting where you're feeling right now in the state of the race. So I want to start off by you've constantly said and polls have said that you are the one to beat Joe Biden um, and you're the one who can do it. So how are you going to get past, you know, the Iowa caucuses and really deliver uh, a win here as well as in the states to lead up to get that nomination to beat Joe Biden? I mean, we're three days away from the caucus. We have campaigned for 11 months, shaking every hand, answering every question. Um, you know, we've done over 150 town halls. This was about building relationships with the people of Iowa and making sure that we had some trust there. And so we feel excited about where we are. Our goal is to make sure we have a strong showing in the caucuses. It's cold out there, but people get the fact you know, 75% of Americans don't want to see a rematch with between Trump and Biden. They see that as in the past. They see that as negativity and chaos. And, you know, what I have said is I, I think President Trump was the right president at the right time. I agree with a lot of his policies, but rightly or wrongly, chaos follows him. And we can't have a country in disarray and a world on fire and go through four more years of chaos. We won't survive it. And we have to make sure we don't have another nail biter of an election. No one wants a President Kamala Harris. And so in order to do that, I'm the only one that defeats Biden by double digits, by 17 points. And that's a mandate. That's a mandate going into D.C. to get our economy back on track and stop the wasteful spending, to get our kids reading again and go back to the basics on education, to secure our border once and for all, no more excuses, to bring law and order back to our cities and to have a strong America that we can all be proud of. And so... You have to get past the Iowa caucuses. You know, you want to have a strong showing here. So how are you going to, how are you setting yourself apart from the other candidates to really have that strong showing here? I mean, no one can outwork us. We have literally been anywhere and everywhere. We will continue to do that. We're shaking hands. We're doing phone calls with voters. We're trying to get caucus people to bring their friends. And so it's everything until the very end. We're not going to let up. And we hope that we have a strong showing going into New Hampshire. And so we're taking it one state at a time. We are playing in all the states, not just one state. And we're going to make sure that we're doing we're not going to be outworked and we're not going to be outsmarted. We have a country to save and we're going to do whatever it takes to do that. And that leads into, you know, my next question is you clearly have already a good amount of momentum going into New Hampshire with Governor Sununu's endorsement. So would you, you know, accept a second or third place here considering that momentum that you do have? What we have said is we want to be strong in Iowa, strong in New Hampshire and stronger in South Carolina. That's the goal. We are quickly seeing that this is becoming a two term, a two person race. And so what strong looks like, we'll find out on election day. You have to see where the numbers play out. But we just want to have a strong showing going into New Hampshire. And I think we're going to see that. You're going to see this quickly become a two person race. Are you worried about the weather on caucus night, about people showing up? I'm worried about people being safe. I mean, negative 28 wind chill is something you don't get in South Carolina. So I hope people will layer up. I hope they remember to bring their ID. I hope that they remember that we need them to show up. I, Iowa sets the tone for our country. They really do. They're the first ones that say, this is the direction we think this, the country should go. And so, yes, we want them to show up, but we want them to be safe in that process. We don't know what it means when you've got this kind of cold, but um, I have faith and we're gonna keep on pushing every step of the way. And for those who are a little bit worried to get out, why should they? I guess, what's your message for why they should come out for you? We have a country to save. We need people to get out and caucus. This matters. I mean, you see every election they say is more important than the one before. But never have we had a country in disarray and a world on fire like we see right now. And we can't go forward dealing with vendettas and grievances and people taking things personally. We've got to go forward mission focused, ready to get our country back on track and make America strong again. And we can only do that if we have a new generational conservative leader. And I want to ask about uh, Chris Christie dropping out of the race. That changes things up a little bit in New Hampshire. Have you reached out to him at all and maybe we're looking for his endorsement? Um, or what are your thoughts on his dropout? I, I think that, you know, anytime someone gets out of the race, it matters. I think he had about 10 percent in New Hampshire. That's not small. So we're going to fight for every one of his voters and try and, and get that here. And look, I mean, I, he, I wish him well. Um, I don't take politics personally. Um, like the fellows do. For me, this is about saving a country and going forward. So we're going to fight for those votes. I'm not asking for his endorsement. 
So you wouldn't ask for his endorsement going into New Hampshire? No, I've called him and wished him well and, and told him I appreciated what he did in the race, but I'm not asking him for his endorsement. Okay, so I want to bring it back to, you know, Iowa. The economy is something that Iowans are really care about. It's the most cared about topic in this race for Iowans. So I want to hear about what you would do to ensure Iowans that are maybe worried about, you know, their rent or gas prices as president. What is your first step to ensuring Iowans that, you know, comfortability? I mean, Iowans know that everything that they have to have has gone up, whether it's groceries, whether it's gas, whether it's their mortgage payment, whether it's insurance payments. And I have called out, Republicans and Democrats both did that to us. And that's the reason why we need an accountant in the White House. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna call out both parties and say, we're gonna start by clawing back to over $100 billion of unspent COVID dollars. Instead of 87,000 IRS agents going after middle America, let's go after the hundreds of billions of dollars of COVID fraud. One out of every $7 was spent fraudulently. If 8% of our budget is interest, quit borrowing, cut up the credit cards. Iowans have to balance their budget every day. I had to balance a budget as governor. Why is Congress the only group that refuses to balance a budget? We'll stop the spending, we'll stop the borrowing, we'll eliminate the pet projects and earmarks, and I'll veto any spending bill that doesn't take us back to pre-COVID levels. And then we'll move as many federal programs down to the states that will reduce the size of the federal government and empower people here in Iowa and the people on the ground. And then we'll eliminate the federal gas and diesel tax in this country. We will make sure that we make the small business tax cuts permanent. Small businesses are the heartbeat of our economy. We need to act like it. And we'll cut taxes on the middle class so that they can breed. When we do that, we'll start to pay down debts, we'll start to fill our coffers, we'll grow our economy, and we'll set the tone that there's an accountant in the White House that's gonna respect every taxpayer dollar and government makes too much money. Now it's time for Americans to get their money back. I want to ask about your uh, debate performance a couple nights ago. You know, you really created the narrative of RondeSantisLies.com. So I want to ask just about the strategy behind that and why you really wanted to push that in somewhat of a final message, you know, going into the caucuses. Look, I mean, debates are a bit of a scrum. And what a candidate always wants is to get their issues out, get their solutions out, do that. And we've seen commercial after commercial from DeSantis, and it's dozens of lies. This isn't just one or two, dozens of lies. I mean, well over 20, 25 lies. And so we wanted people to know that, look, he's going to continue to lie, but we want you to know the truth. And so we said, go to DeSantisLies.com. It, it covers every issue so that if any voter is wondering where I stand and they've heard something on a commercial, they can go check that out for themselves. But I'll tell you, if you know these candidates that are lying, they're lying because they're losing. And I don't think you have to lie to, to, to win. And so what we're going to do is tell the truth on that website, tell them to go to NikkiHaley.com, and we're going to win the right way. So then I want to also ask about what he said on the debate stage. He said, I think, quote, that you keep shooting yourself in the foot on the campaign trail. And I guess what is your response to that, and how do you – plan to, you know, almost prove him wrong going into the caucuses. I have proven him wrong. I haven't shot myself in the foot this whole way. I mean, we started with 14 candidates and I had 2% in the polls. Now I'm, you know, the second candidate, I've got one more fella to catch up to. We have run a very good race. We've run a smart race. We've been fiscally responsible. We saved our money. We put it where it mattered. And that meant flying commercial. That meant staying in a lot of residence inns. We did it a very frugal way because that's how I am. He spent all his money and he's only gone down in the polls. I don't know how you blow through 150 million, but he did. But he can say whatever he wants. I think that, that what we are seeing in Iowa, what we will see in New Hampshire and South Carolina will make its um, point on its own, but we're gonna continue to fight. I don't care what anybody else says. I, again, I don't take this personally. They can say what they want. I'm focused on America. Another issue that I just want to talk to you about real quick is education, um, something that Iowans, again, really care about and is really important to them. South Carolina has ranked, you know, in the bottom 10 states in education, you know, in the past. How can you ensure to Iowans that that won't be the same case if you're a president of the United well, the States? The first thing I did as governor, when you see that, you know that education is key, but you also know that you have to take care of families. We knew if a person had a job, we were taking care of a family. So I came into a state that had 11% unemployment, that had thousands of people on welfare, that had really become the butt of the jokes. And so we had a lot to climb out of. We turned it into a powerhouse. Now South Carolina builds planes and cars and tires. We became the beast of the Southeast. We moved thousands of people from welfare to work by making sure we got our people trained so that they were getting back in. And then we did focus on the kids in education. 
We knew if a child couldn't read by third grade, they were four times less likely to graduate high school. So we started holding them back instead of pushing them forward. We brought in their parents. We did reading remediation. We've got a lot of poverty areas in South Carolina, but we wanted to make sure they had the resources that they could. We changed the funding formula. So we lifted up the rural areas without bringing down the good areas. It takes time to dig out of that, but at least we did something about it. At least we're moving. And that's the key is we've got to get our kids reading, writing, going back to the basics. And I think what we've seen in education, they started to focus on all things that aren't the basics. And that's what we'll do when, when we become president is send those resources down to the state so that they have more resources to teach our kids. Where do you see the state of this race going after the Iowa caucuses? I think it's going to be a two-person race going into New Hampshire. I think that we're going to make sure that we're strong um, in New Hampshire. We're going to, we fought just as hard there, and we think it's going to be a good day in New Hampshire, a good day in South Carolina, and a good day for America. And then can I just ask one last question real quick is just final message for Iowans to, you know, get out there that you really want to leave them with. that could resonate with them. We can't have a President Kamala Harris, and we can't live in chaos anymore. And we don't wanna leave, lead with names in the past. We wanna go forward with the future. We need someone who can win a general election, but we also need an accountant that'll get the economy back on track. We need a mom who understands the importance of kids' education. We need to make sure as the wife of a combat veteran who's deployed now, that we take care of our veterans and we secure our border because it's a national security threat. And so we're gonna go through, we're gonna work hard, we're gonna fight for every vote, and we're gonna make America proud. That's what we want. As a mom, I don't want my kids to live like this anymore. Something's gotta shift in our country. And the only shift that can happen is a new generational leader, and I'm gonna do that. Awesome, thank you so much. Thanks I really so much. appreciate your time today. It was thank great, you. I'm excited for the final few days. It was really right, nice to job. meet you today. Thank good you. luck in okay. the next three days, or thank four you. days are we at? Three, three, three days, three days now. I know. <laughs> Thank you guys. I hope Thank that was on time so and everything. Yeah. Appreciate that. Appreciate the cue. <laughs>